I would say that the G1 is the winner. Hey guys, how you all doing? I'm Paul Tech Giant, and welcome back to the channel once again, where tonight I'm gonna to be conducting another screen uniformity and a burning test on my 65 inch LG C10 OLED. Now don't worry, you are not seeing double. I do in fact have my LG G1 OLED up the top there, and my C10 OLED down the bottom. And uh, I've been doing a little bit of testing between the two TVs. So tonight I'm gonna have to do this screen uniformity and burning test with this C10 down the bottom. So it might be a little bit awkward filming tonight, so please bear with me. But just for a bit of a laugh, what I'm gonna do is when I run the 5% grayscale, I'm also gonna fire up the G1 as well. And we can just take a look to see how they compare on that 5% grayscale. Now, when it comes to screen on time, I am up by about 150 hours over last month on the C10. So grand total now, we are up to approximately 2,400 hours of screen on time. Big thanks to the guys at box.co.uk for supplying both of these TVs. And if you'd like to pick up a brand new TV for yourself, then please check out their link in the description. Rightio then, starting off as we usually do with a 5% grayscale. So this is the C10 that we are looking at now then. And um, not seeing really much of a change. Uh, obviously, I've not put many hours on the TV since last time. Uh, we still do have that dark patch there on the left and once again on the right hand side that darker area just stretching up the screen. Vertical banding wise not too bad really. Um, again we can still see a few little streaks there but overall yeah really not too bad compared to before. So let's move on up then to the G1 and uh, as you can see it's immediately a lot brighter looking. Uh, little sort of hints of uh, or tinges of pink to the screen but overall it does look a lot brighter and uh, we do have a slightly dark patch just there and there as well and uh, some very faint vertical banding and just sort of one more prominent line just there. But overall, out of the two, if I was comparing them, I would say that the G1 is the winner. Next up is the color test where we will check for any burning or any dead or stuck pixels. I've now turned off the G1 OLED because we will be doing a separate screen uniformity and burning test for that in a couple of weeks time. And I thought I'd just throw that 5% gray scale in just for a bit of fun. But going in closer then on the C10, and uh, it's all looking pretty good. Now again, you're gonna have to bear with me because I'm on my knees doing this, so I might not get the best angles, but I'm still gonna carry on and do this video, if nothing more than for the consistency of the video. So uh, we can prove that if there has been anything uh, going funny with a the TV, then we've got it all documented. But as far as I can see, that is looking nice and healthy. No dead or stuck pixels or patches that I can see. Moving on to blue now then, and going a little bit closer. Oh, my knees are making a right old noise, getting too old. So starting off top left there. And uh, for anyone who doesn't know, we'd uh, potentially see sort of outlines of static logos and things like that. There was any burning, it'd leave an impression. And these colors like this, static colors, would help to uh, show those up. And obviously any dead or stuck pixels again would show up, but I'm not seeing anything, which is great news. Just take a look at the center. And that all looks squeaky clean. Moving on to green then. And uh, as far as my usage goes with this uh, screen, 
since we've last done a test. Again, bit of a mixed bag really, maybe not so much gaming. Um, quite a few films though, I'd say. So again, we've got those uh, black bars at the top and bottom. And a lot of people do ask me, is that an issue? Well, as you can see, it's not causing any issues for this screen. And that green, it's all looking hunky-dory. Let's go to the middle. Again, nothing to report. Finally, we're gonna finish up with red then. And uh, just wanna point out that this test is a little bit later than uh, usual. So it's been about six weeks, I think, as opposed to the regular four weeks that I'd normally do it. Um, reason being that the TVs have sort of been in and out of boxes a little bit. So I wanted to give it a little bit more time to just get a few more hours on it because there's no point in doing another test if I've only put literally a handful of hours on it. So uh, yeah, that is the reason why this test is a little bit late, but I do aim to keep doing these tests as long as I can with this LG C10 and that red looks perfectly good to me. Well, there you go then guys, that is another test done and dusted. Now, if you have stuck this far into the video, then you're getting a sneak peek between these two TVs being tested out. As, like I said, I'm gonna be doing a dedicated video, which should be up in the next few days. And uh, you may be wondering why I'm gonna be comparing the C10 to the G1. Well, essentially the C10 was no different to the G10 from last year when it comes to pitch quality. So I think it's gonna be a fair comparison and a lot of people do want to know if it's worth upgrading from the C10 to the G1. And that's what we're gonna be answering in that video coming very soon. So if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, then make sure you do so for that video and loads of other great content coming very soon. Now, if you could do me a massive favor and if you've enjoyed this video, just spare a second to give me a thumbs up. So thanks very much for joining me today and hopefully I'll catch you guys on the next one. Bye for now.